Hello and welcome back to Terror Hand, where we are looking at what is by far the most awesome uh, great hall to be in all of Nomoria World and Kingdoms. Now, um, as it stands, uh, we have important business to do. <laughs> Among of which is, of course, removing the last pieces of scaffolding, but we also have a new nomad, and I am about to name that one. First of all, though, let's actually find a sad nomad. Uh, let us see. We have, if I'm not mistaken, Somewhere, yeah, Kazard, there you are. You are stocking items. Where are you now? Let's see. You are, I believe, you are carrying a two-headed ogre. <laughs> Welcome to your first day in Terror Hand, where we have ogres to carry off and uh, <laughs> well, lots of other stuff that uh, needs carrying off because we are awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so Kazar is over here, and what we are going to do is rename Kazard. It's actually Kazard <laughs> for a female nomad. Kazard, you are going to be renamed to Helgrim. There. Now, as for your profession, I have also uh, got that all nailed down, and though we do kind of need to work on the details. Kazard is going to join the, now let us see our squads, we should have the blind dungs over here. Kazard is going to join the blind dungs, um, which was, if I recall correctly, our golem uh, killing squad. And as such, I think we should have Kazard be a dozer. Yeah, Kazard, you be a dozer. Uh, <laughs> question is though, where do I find her? <laughs> she should be all the way down there. Yeah, because all our gnomes are assigned, of course. There, Helgrim Nomad. You are no longer a nomad, though we kind of also need to set her profession, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it, it needs, I need some getting back into this because we haven't had nomads for quite a while even before we uh, we took our hibernation you know our long winter sleep uh, well we kind of weren't really getting any nomad that many nomads but that might change once we finish our great hall now as for what we're going to do um, basic whoa game 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 no, what we're gonna do, basically, uh, is simple. Um, I want to set up a few things. Uh, mainly, oops. I mainly want to set up a few uh, food stockpiles over here because I don't want our food to be, uh, you know, all over the place. I want it in a central place right over here. And we're gonna have drinks over here. So I guess what we need to do is set up a few stockpiles here and there. Let us see. Can we see what stockpiles we have that actually have food and drinks in them? We only have one rations uh, stockpile, which is all the way over here. For the rest, I believe it was actually in the kitchens only. Now, mind you, I don't mind the rations being there, so that's actually a good thing, you know. Wow, the game isn't liking this. <laughs> it's not liking it in the slightest. Right. Now then, what we need to do is we need to start setting up uh, a few... Uh, wow, this is so long. <laughs> Ever since I lost the, this. Yeah, we need to set up a drink stockpile. I don't want uh, just any type of drink to be over here. So... We will call this, because we have beer, wine, and tea. We're gonna call this... Bear... <laughs> bear! <laughs> no, uh, great beer. And then we shall probably have the other one could be called Great Beer uh, 1 or something. I do want this at Prio 2. It's important that we get uh, this filled up at pretty much all times. 
Let's see, we need to get the drinks out there and then all the beer. Yeah, <laughs> as if there was anything other than wheat beer. Right, okay, so that's what you need to have. Uh, we also need to build um, furniture on it, but we'll do that later. For now, let's also get our wine stockpile. The great wine pile. <laughs> uh, I need to move this up in prio. And we also need to set this up for wine. Now we're not gonna get ourselves any milk. I don't think we really need that. So then we shall call this uh, the Gritty. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, the great, the great tea cup supply, <laughs> supply, <laughs> uh, the great tea. Just great tea, whatever. You know, we need to get, we need to keep it clear as well, so we kind of know what's where when we need to locate stuff. At least, going by the names, uh, this shouldn't leave anything to the imagination. And then, let's see, I want stockpile stuff in there, and I want barrels in here. Any barrel will do. There. Go forth and build me this stuff. Now, we also need uh, stuff over here. And I'm kind of wondering, I think we only, we should only really want sandwiches over here, if I'm perfectly honest. So, oops, uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't want, uh, they're not gonna stock anything there, that's actually good. Right, I think, you know what, let's cancel this one. Let's, come on, game. It's not really responding that well. It might have something to do with the fact that, uh, well... Wait, hold on a second. Eight. Remove designation. There. Now, it might have something to do with the kingdom being big and all. Um, now, what I think we should have over here is just, um... Maybe not five? I mean, five piles, because how much can go in there? Yeah, 64, that's a lot. Maybe we shouldn't get five piles of sandwiches over here. Maybe we should also get... I don't know, really. I mean, five piles seems like a lot. You know what? What we'll do is we'll expand it. We will make it five tiles, but we'll only build one crate. So, how about we call this... Uh, the... <laughs> the Great Subway. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're gonna call this Terror Club sandwich with chicken and mayonnaise and bacon and what have you there and of course here we do only want the food to be sandwiches I guess we could also have omelettes in there though I'm pretty sure that sandwiches are actually the best coming to think of it though we will probably actually remove a few of these designations and make like two of these hold on a second did I just I thought that I had removed the designation here yeah now now it works I don't know the game's not really responsive today <laughs> I guess that stuff can happen then we're gonna get over here the great egg the ostrich egg <laughs> There. Uh, also, prior to, and for the time being, what we'll do is we'll just. Uh, oh wow, we can have all kinds of omelets, but I only want the ones with extra stuff added. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build one crate and um, yeah, both of these stockpiles, and see if we need to add any more. I highly doubt it. And yeah, we should get get them pine crates out there. There, right, done. Now we need to do the same pretty much over here. So I'll quickly uh, speed this stuff up.
Now, righty, and almost done. All we need to do is uh, get ourselves one crate over here. Oops. Man, hotkeys, man. I still need to get back into those. I'm so not used to them. <laughs> well, not, not the, that I'm estranged to the concept, but... Anyway, what we need to do right now is, of course, make sure that we uh, remove any other uh, stockpiles that we have. Uh, thought that we only had the rations one. Let us see what we do have exactly that contains these types of food. I want... Oh, there's no drinks one. Apparently there isn't. Let me see though where the drinks are being stored. Oh no, wait, those are items. These are the ones that we track. Hmm. I don't know. It seems to me that this is actually good. So uh, all we'll be doing over here is just enlarging our food stockpiles a little. But this is important in the greater goal. Because I want this, you know, this great hall to be bustling with activity. I want all the gnomes to sit here and enjoy, you know, the lavish food that we do have. So, yeah. Now, as for um, the rest that we're gonna do... Oh, also, I kind of do wonder... Oh, crap, I actually need to look that up over here. I am wondering, like, Kazard, do you... Are you Kazard? No, you... Wait, Halgrim, you already got yourselves a fully-fledged suit? Am I seeing this right, Halgrim? No, that's... that's Brentgar. Halgrim, is this you? The one with the steel warhammer? <laughs> it seems uh, this is actually you. Wow, amazing. So quick to get any gear over here. That's really nice. Anyway, uh, another thing that we have gotten during our build is... Um, it's quite interesting, actually. I don't know if we should do something with it, but it is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, I don't really know where to find it, though. Um, let's see. Where would it be? I'm not going to say about what it is. Statics. No, it's definitely not over here, <laughs> but, um, well, you can kind of guess and tell uh, what I'm looking for, I guess. Yeah, there it is, the golem core. Look at what we have. We have two wheat golem cores and one pine golem core. I guess we could make golems right now. I am, however, not going to do that. Uh, also, let me just suspend these. We don't need these to be active if we're not acti actively hauling corpses and stuff, so... No, but I guess technically we go could make golems uh, now that we have their cores, but I'm not going to because the golems do count for the total population uh, number, so... The more golems we have, the less gnomes we can have. And also, <laughs> hooray for realistic physics! <laughs> this is a support pillar <laughs> that is supposedly <laughs> to keep up <laughs> this massive wall. <laughs> or, the, the, you know, this workshop. Who knew that I would build a viewing hall over here, right? I guess we could extend this to, uh, you know, to go up and then have the pillar just raise up here. But I don't really, I mean... <sighs> I guess we have to. I believe it's. We also have. Yeah, over here it's actually going ju just fine. Maybe it was in some other place that we ran into the same issue. Yeah, over here. <laughs> Look, <laughs> see another pillar, another hole. <laughs> Over here it's all working fine, it's just that over here it doesn't really look that um, right. Uh, we could change it uh, for the time being, I'll leave it, because we have more important stuff to do. Like if we zoom out, you can clearly see that things are not being as um, full. I think that if you yell, damage, <laughs> over here you get an echo, like damage, judge, 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 <laughs> you know, like that. So, what we need to do over here, of course, is simple. Um, we need to fill this up with furniture. And we're gonna do so, but not right at the start. Because we, you know, this was once, long ago, the super secret project. It is not so secret anymore. It is still big. <laughs> I mean, it was the 
big secret project uh, when it was conceived. Right now it's a little bit less uh, secret, but there is still one part that is secret. Because we need a throne over here. We need something that is even greater than the Iron Throne. And what is there greater than having a... Uh, throne made of a unique material. Yeah, that's what we're... Wow. <laughs> At times, the game's just farting itself, basically. Anyway, there is nothing greater than a throne made of a super unique material. A material that we do not possess uh, currently, but we are going after it. Now, um, as it stands, you know, this material, um, we need to make it. And for that, what we need to do is, um, well, we kind of need to go all the way down over here. All the way, all the way. Even further down, you know, all these Z-levels, we need to traverse all of them. And then even further, down to over here. I don't know if here is the best place, but this is basically where we need to go for our sexy new material. Now, the good thing is, we can actually uh, uncover this by digging into over here we don't need to open up any caves or anything you know expose ourselves to the views and possibly to a lot of uh, <laughs> well uh, beetles and what have you that lives down here the key crucial difficult bit uh, is though that we oh, what do we have oh, that's actually our pumps yeah, we've run this down of lava for one level. I remember now. That's what we use to fill up the tea. Anyway, what we need to do over here is we need to open up access to this lava. We need to be able to do stuff with it. And I have searched before I started recording long and hard to see if there was any way we could safely access it and I have found it. Now, just bear with me uh, whilst I select a square. I'm not entirely sure whether or not it was here, but let's for you know, the sake of argument um, put it over here. Look at me go up. I'm not moving the mouse. The square stays at, at the same place. Now watch for the development of any caves. Do you see what I'm seeing here? We're all safe. And that, I believe, is the closest we get to any open cave area. So, I'm just going up here. Uh, we won't find any caves over here. The question is, though, where are we going to surface? Uh, right next to our tower. Now, I do believe that this was also a safe area. So, I guess, technically speaking, what we could do is we could just have the shaft be over here. Look, that could totally work out. In fact, I think it would be even better if we have the shaft over here. This does leave us in open, contested areas, but I think it's worth it. So, oh, and we have a merchant. Hello, merchant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just quickly gonna assign digging jobs at least into all these areas so we know like, okay, this is the shaft. Everything that we do needs to be aimed around this. Alright, and done. So, this is a very, 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 very long shaft <laughs> we have here. That's what she said. However, there is one interesting thing, and that is over here. Apparently, oh wow, there's even like a whole cavernous area over here. Where apparently the walls are open. 
this will pose a great challenge because I wasn't really aware of such things being able to happen. Look, it's the same over here basically. And as far as I can tell over here, what we're having over here is just a miniature cave. Uh, that's the only way I can put it, because over here everything is closed already, so... It's gonna be a bit dangerous, it's gonna be one of the first times that we have ever put uh, open wall space um, in our dungeon, so by the time we get there I think it might be a wise decision to, uh, well, to at least, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, <laughs> um, how shall I put this? Uh, to... You know, secure the area. Put guards there. How about the blind dunks, for example? They might be able to handle whatever spawns down here. Uh, but of course, what we'll do is we'll try and fill it up uh, as quickly as possible. Now, as you can see, we also have two goblin corpses down there. Uh, is it two, actually? Yeah, it's definitely two. Look at that, goblin corpse, goblin corpse. It's a shame, their loots and their bodies, they're all gone for us, unfortunately. Now, as far as our food situation, oh my, do we have a absolute crap load of food. And oh my, do we need to sell some. Let me do some trading so that we can actually get rid of some. Well, actually, um, it's easier said than done if there are no merchants around. I thought we had a merchant of the domestic papers uh, actually coming in. I wouldn't mind if... Uh, well, you, you've got to be kidding me. Is there a merchant coming or was that somebody else? No, <laughs> it is the merchant actually. How nice. Hello merchant. Let us do some trading here. <laughs> and then we see that he does not have anything to trade us for, really. <laughs> I mean, of all the things we need, um, wood is the one thing we have in plenty of, so... Now, I don't feel like trading him for wood. All it would do is just add to the possibility of spawning golems. Uh, another thing, actually, that's interesting about wheat golems, I mean, they spawn over here in our wheat field, right? Well, guess what happens uh, when a wheat golem spawns? It actually sucks up a crap load of wheat. <laughs> and we were able to only just get by in our wheat supply for the amount of uh, flock and livestock we have. <laughs> so, yeah, those golems, they definitely take their cut and we cannot use wheat as a trading commodity any longer because it is being taken from us, my precious. Now, the easiest way to access uh, our shaft would be from this area, so we might as well get started with that. But, you know, before, before we get to that, um, let me just explain to you what our new material is gonna be like. It is not like metal, it is not like wood, it is a new type of stone, I believe, if I'm correct. And we are going to make it by having water excess lava um i maybe i i mean at least as far as i knew in the old beta versions <laughs> when we played before hibernation the way to make it was to have lava come in contact with water and um, i hope that hasn't changed um you know going from beta to uh, full game release so now initially this whole shenanigan that we have over here was to try and get a big body of water and then just uh, make the tunnel go down from here but well you know with a sidestep of course into the hill and then all the way around but you know the more i thought about that the more i realized like yeah but there's going to be issues like this for example we cannot go through a cave system like this because it will be hazardous so then it really became like okay all we, we, we you know, the best thing we can hope for is to just have a shaft here that will trickle uh, rainwater, you know, when it starts raining and we have a lucky drop on like any of these neighboring tiles, then we shall have rainwater come in contact with lava. And that should hopefully for us make the uh, basalt that we are going to use to make the throne for the emperor. 
or at least that is the plan. Now, as far as uh, stockpiles go, because, you know, doing that, I mean, it's nice, but in all honesty, like, what is this over here? I don't think we should have these. Let me deconstruct these barrels, as well as those, because I don't really want any of these stockpiles over here. Nor do I really want them, uh, them arrow stacking places over here. Uh, let's see, remove designation. And the same over there. Right, okay, so by deconstructing these, then we can safely do that. And that should also give a lot of hauling jobs to get the food. Uh, from this place down to the Great Hall. So we should not stack up our food amounts. I wonder why I couldn't see what was in here, really. You know, when I went to the uh, stockpile uh, overview item thingy. There. Those are all deassigned. That's great. What I actually want is for the stockpiles of the uh, arrows, you know, the bolts to be over here. So they can be safely restocked without the gnomes going paranoia about anything. So uh, let me assign two stockpiles here quickly. All right, and done. So, um, by the time that this is all finished, we should st see them bolts over there being moved to the bolts pile over there. And then whenever, you know, our gnomes uh, fire shots over here, and they need a restock, they can get one without the gnomes doing the restocking, actually being panicked and trying to flee away from the stairs, because that is what happened. And you know, it's kind of counterproductive, especially because the moment the, you know, the stocking gnome starts to flee, then um, the hauling job will get uh, taken over by another gnome and he will move uh, towards this place as well. And if there are still enemies, we'll also get trapped, which could actually lead to like 10 or 50 gnomes actually standing over here being trapped on the one square. I've seen it happen before and it's not pretty. Now, um, that's taken care of. What do we have over here? This is medic stuff, that's good. These are the rations, I kind of do want to keep them over here. You know, these are the only ones that I do want to keep over there. So, they are allowed. I don't believe we actually have any other place for rations anywhere, now, do we? I hope not, <laughs> at least. What do we have over here? We have medicine. And we have booze. I mean, hospital booze. You were suspended. I mean, I guess maybe that's why we weren't seeing them. I don't think we really... I mean, what do we have over here? Nutrients. Oh, wow, there's a lot of wheelbarrows here. What do you have in them? Sausages. <laughs> oh my good lord. We might have more food than we could possibly... <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know, really. Something's not right about the amount of wheelbarrows that I see over here. In any case, uh, what we should we should probably keep those as well, because what we don't want, of course, is our uh, hospitalized gnomes trying to get food from over here when there's fighting here, you know, because they need to go past this. There could be fighting. I don't want our gnomes to see it. So we're going to keep the hospital stuff there, you know. But other than that, I think we're actually good. We don't need to do anything else. So, or no, do we? Yeah, there is a thing. I'm not entirely sure, you know, but I believe that our tinkering, and let me just get to the tinker place, <laughs> if I can find it, that is. There used to be a tinker's place near where the, uh, I believe it was over here. No, these are prospecting places. This isn't the tinker bench. That's a bone cutter. <laughs> Definitely not a tinker bench. Stone carving, also not for tinkering. Do we even have a tinker place? I believe this might be it. Come on, be the tinker. Yeah, there it is, the tinker bench. Look, see, all of a sudden we can have um, gnomes be assigned to oh my good lord <laughs> a 
Lads, we have manned to the battlement. Let us see what happens to the mans. Now, <laughs> it's a long time ever since we've last seen an attack. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> well, that was the mans. But then you can see that the game just craps itself because, oh, never mind. The mans can teleport up. Now, luckily, mans are still a pushover and the stern wanderers will dispatch them easily. Look, see? I mean, that, that was it for the mans. Don't think that there's anybody over here. Nope, the mans are gone. <laughs> that simple. Uh, goblins, of course, do take way, way longer. Uh, anyway, what we were looking at was the tinkering. Now, as you could see, uh, let's get back to it. There was tinkering being done, but I do believe... Let's take a look at our, our tinker. Who was our tinkerer? I mean, forgive me for forgetting, but it's been such a long time. Who is our tinker? We have our shiny crafter who's sleeping, filling throws. That's the rancher. Next gnome we could actually do with another rancher, maybe? Nah, we have three. So tinker all the way down. The Tinkerbell, Nixus, how could I forget? What are, what are your tinker skills? Wow, your curiosity, man. <laughs> oh, wow, you're tinkering, man. Oh, my. <laughs> you're tinkering. <laughs> that is insane. I like it. Uh, your prospecting skills also very good. So, I believe the higher this goes, the faster and the more chance we have for uh, useful slivers. But I also do believe that, yeah, there is a lot to be tinkered about here. Like, we have lapis and marble. Let's take a look at our lapis and marble. So we can kind of see how much you still need to do. Raw stone. Uh, items. Balls need the items. Stone, raw stone. So, there is... Well, actually, the lapis is being taken care of. But the marble, on the other hand... Only 1800 to go. Yep, and counting. <laughs> well, not literally, but... Uh, yeah, so that's a lot. Uh, this one is actually... Oh, wow. You have 5,000. So after that, there is like another 3,000 uh, dirt to prospect. So, yeah. <laughs> We have our work cut out for us. Anyway, um, like I was saying, what we should do is uh, get ourselves moving with this whole shenanigan that we're going to do over here. And the way to do that, uh, I believe at least, is to um, make some soil stairs. Now this is where the shaft is going to be. I don't want the room to become too big. So I guess this will do. And now here's the thing as well we kind of need to have these stairs be really close together because every tile we put in between will make it longer for the gnomes to travel you know what I wonder what if we build scaffolding over here so this is where the thing will be what if we put scaffolding like say right over here it works. I wonder though how this will proceed. Let us speed up the game a little bit and let's see what happens when this gets built. I mean, there's definitely a gnome coming for it. A gnome? Come. <laughs> build plicks. There. Alright, alright. Let's see what happens because I do believe. Yeah. This is actually what is happening. With the scaffolding, you can actually dig out the terrain. That's glorious, actually. That will make it a lot easier to uh, dig out on this corridor that we need to create here. I don't know if mobs can spawn on scaffolding or not. We're going to assume that they can. So, because of... Oh, wow, but... If we're able to build scaffolding, <laughs> then this is going to be really easy. At least going up is. Uh, I don't really know about how to proceed from going down. Other than that, we need to start at the bottom. I mean, if that's the case, it's kind of unfortunate, though. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that were to be the case. 
All right, so now we really want this to be filled up ASAP because this is just a room for uh, enemies to spawn over here. So someone <laughs> get a torch here, quick now, please. I mean, oh, nice. All right, so there we have it. Oh, of course that still needs digging. But this could this could easily be our uh, you know how we're gonna set up this uh, this tunnel over here with just scaffolding. Now uh, to go further down that this is where our miniature cave will be. Uh, so we could work from minus fifty three. Are there any other close by pathways? And I should know about. No, not really. So from 53 to like 90, we need to do it all by hand. There's also probably well, we could we could do some digging all the way through here. That might be worth it if that's the easiest way to traverse this stuff. But I don't know really. If we don't have to, I'd rather uh, just not have to go down all the way to the bottom first only then to go up again you know because that's just a really really long way right well I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff to do i also saw that there was a merchant coming in so let me see where the merchant is i mean it must be you it must be Wow, and you are also one of the... Didn't we not have a mi ding mining thing somewhere? I mean, let me just check, because honestly, this is... Oh, and by the way, look at this. The total worth of the kingdom. It's a shame I didn't really check this when... Uh, when I started uh, decorating the walls of the Great Terror Hall. But... I was pretty sure that it was somewhere around a million. Now we're like half of that worth more. In fact, I'm not even sure that uh, we're gonna uh, exceed this to 2 million. I'm gonna try our hardest, of course. But I don't even know if that's enough to get another Nomad, if I'm honest. I mean, if you look at our population, we have 52 Nomads. And I think from here on... Uh, <laughs> You know, all of the gnomes are going to get an exponential worth cap thing to, uh, well, you know, to to lure them in. But what we should be able to do is because the Great Hall counts for, I believe it was double actually. Wait, 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 it says it over here. The worth of your Great Hall uh, helps attract nomads. Only one dining room can be designated as the Great Hall. I'm not entirely sure whether or not it was four or... Uh, or... What was it? Four or... Two or eight times the worth, you know, for the gnome count? <laughs> I mean, I knew that at some point, but... Now, there, before we get to, uh, you know, do some heavy construction, what we also want to do is take a look over here and probably nourishment go for the best there also how does this affect how far gnomes will travel for a better i don't think 100 is actually that good we'll put it to 90 and then i want to make sure that over here in the rations i don't have uh, sandwiches i want yeah i've I was fearing this much. I want just fruit and eggs. And I want just fruit and mushrooms there, really. Right. Fruit and mushrooms. And the same over here. And in the other one, I want milk. Just so that there is poorer food quality. Uh, oh, this has everything. All right. <laughs> uh, and mushrooms. Mushrooms. There. No, but th that's just to keep the best food down in the terror hall. So gnomes that are not over here should weigh the food down in the terror hall a lot higher than they will value in these rations. Or so I hope. Now, let's see. Um, those are the rations. We also need to do the ones over here. The spirit. <laughs> Very important. 
what do you have? I want only milk in here, actually. Because that's a lower grade food. Yeah, wine and tea. How about milk? So we can also get rid of some of the milk over there in Yakville. <laughs> Jack Yaksville. <laughs> also known as our pasture. Which is nicely to the water side, which doesn't flood anymore. Oh man, I remember that stuff. Also, are we actually gonna be in trouble with our... We should be right next to the side over here. Until we make it to the very last height level. Over here, we, you know, over here, this is kind of where we don't want to do it anymore. Uh, in that fashion. But we should be able to get this done. You know, let's, let's start construction on the first stretch. So, yeah, just uh, let's do some building, shall we? That I might have missed it, but my instincts tell me that there might be a merchant out here. We might have interest in, and I think it is you actually. You might be from a place. Ah, oh, yes, finally. You are from a place where we can buy interesting stuff from. Look at all the stuff we can buy from you. I want all of it and more. I think we are actually going to need quite a lot of iron for this, so the iron is actually going to get prio and <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of worth, <laughs> a hell of a lot of worth. Let me set up a trading deal and um, I'll get back to you once I have uh, find uh, or I have found a right one. Now, right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have struck ourselves a deal uh, with uh, Mr. Merchant over here, who is a rather tough bargain, if I uh, may say so myself. I thought that the Emperor in the hibernation might have practiced some haggling skills, but it seems the opposite. <laughs> Look at the prices he's charging. I mean, he wants uh, 40 for a piece of copper ore. Oh man. Anyway, um, this is all the iron that I was able to get and you know, I filled up the worth with some clay because of course we do not give away anything. Now, the one thing that I still need to add because you know, in good tradition, I shall, uh, well, you know, this is an old terror hand tradition, but one that will not be forgotten. We are gonna give, uh, you know, a skull of our enemies to seal the deal. There, look, skull added. As for what we are giving away, a lot of seeds and stuff that we produce in Axis, as well as our two-headed ogre hides, we don't really use leather anyway, and we can easily get more if we need to. So I don't really feel like keeping it, as well as all the poor food, poor quality made food. I don't want that stuff, you know. They need to drink faster if they eat this. <laughs> they need to drink faster if they eat this. No, you don't eat your drinks. <laughs> no, but you get what I mean, you know. They can't last uh, as long on this food as on a finely or superiorly crafted uh, sandwich or stuff. Uh, we're also trading some of the decorative stuff as well as some more poor food, so. There you have it. I could have traded more, uh, you know, like some jewelry, but since we're not getting gold, I don't want to lose gold on trading jewelry. So, and I'm not really that dire for iron, it's just that we're using it on our bolts, so. 
That's kind of why we're uh, well, uh, why I want iron. Also, because it's the black metal, you know, it has the black look over it. And I kind of like that. I tend to use it a lot, more than I thought I would at least. So, with uh, that said, you know, you know the deal. There, have it all, merchant of twine busyness. Wow. <laughs> That takes a bit of a while to process. Uh, you'll also see our food stockpiles. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Plummeted to 900. It's not you know, that low. Uh, plenty to survive on, uh, I'd say. But it's enough to reduce the manda attacks to like four or five mans, <laughs> which we just laugh at, you know. <laughs> I mean, we can kill them with uh, with our backs facing them, basically. Now, the one thing that I do did want to check was, yeah, what are our... Uh, you know, our friendly states stuff things. We have lumber camps, a goblin kingdom, which is hostile. Duh. Uh, we, also, we only have two merchants and three lumber camps. <laughs> That's it. Oh, wow. How bad. I mean, in all honesty, that's just really poor. <laughs> uh, and we have an agricultural settlement, as if we need that. I mean, why on earth, why do I not have a mining colony? I mean, if there's one thing that we need is a mining colony. I guess Terror Hand lives in a rough world where ores need to be dug up, you know, by yourself or be traded at outrageous prices. Not much we can do about it, but, oh well. So, anyway, now that we have traded, look, where's all the milk gone? Where are all the mushrooms? <laughs> We're gonna keep the wheat, obviously. But, um, yeah, as you can see, the digging actually goes uh, quite well. Now, let me just rotate the view. Look, see, there's a hole in the ground everywhere. And then we were left, you know, over here up to this place, but... You know, I mean, all this digging, I'm not gonna do it off camera, obviously not, but I might make one big time lapse of it uh, to see if we, you know, to speed up the digging, because this is just laborious work, as there has been a lot in Terror Hand. I'm looking at you, Great Hall of Awesomeness. I'm looking at you. Man, do I love the looks of this. I think it's, oh, it is epic. I mean, it truly is epic. The looks are perfect. You know, if the, the only one thing that, uh, you know, I kind of am not really, you know, that I think, if I have to give out a point of critique, I'd say it's the steel support columns. The blue doesn't really match in that well, but it's, you know, it's not that it's ugly or that I don't like it, you know, but if there is one point I of critique I have to give, it is the steel columns. I still like them though, you know, I, th I still think they fit. But this, this is just, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. I like it. Right, well, I think, you know, we haven't done much, but at the same time, we've kind of taken care of a little bit of business, you know, checked out, a few things and that we hadn't checked for a long time. So you know what? I think it would be a really nice point to end the video on is to check the kills of our members of the Stern Wanderers. Zero kin. Let's see how many kills you have. <gasps> oh my good lord. You killed a lot of mans, but you also killed a lot of goblins and two-headed ogres. Nothing to sneeze at. Oscarson, how many kills do you have? Even more mans, uh, and not as many goblins and ogres. But still, a respectable amount. I mean, if you ever were to go to the Shone Land, to the land of the Greenskins, oh man, you are their nightmare come true, basically. Then we have Adrian Harrison. Let's see. Oh wow, you have quite quite the variety in kills as well. You even killed beetles, zombies, monitor lizards, everything. And above all, mans. <laughs> That's what the Stern Wanderers seem to, me, seem to be most adept at dispatching. We have General Barnabas over here, who has killed 33 two-headed ogres, no less. 455 mans. Skeletons. 
uh, golems, beetles, bears, goblins, zombies, you name it, General Barnabas has seen them all. And last but not least, Wojciech Sukop. You have killed a two-headed luger, lots of mans, and green skins, and it seems that you were one of the last to join the squad. And whilst we are checking this, we might as well check up on uh, the blue checks, Subumi. You <laughs> got a significant amount, less amount of kills. Still though, it's not bad. Uh, with a soul, you have significantly less again. Though I don't think your skills, yeah, look at that, 267 hammer skill. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's nothing to sneeze at, man. That is beyond deadly. Madame Hero Squire has actually got a notable kill. Dr. Randus Pokemon. You were a zombie. I remember. I remember now. Oh. Anyway, the rest is uh, pretty respectable. Uh, we have Resurrected Junior, who killed lots of stuff as well. I mean, even though you're Mr. Junior, I mean, look at your fighting and sword skill, man. <laughs> That's insane. Really is. And then last but not least, we have Minka. Minka has killed also loads of stuff. So yeah, you know, um, during hibernation, we have definitely been racking up the kill count. <laughs> not that this is like from our hibernation only. No, but uh, you know, the numbers are going up. I'm sure our archers have lots of numbers too. But, you know, the amount of kills of our archers and the quest for new materials are all gonna be continued next time when we play more Nomoria.